What's up guys, welcome back to another vlog. This time I'm here in New Zealand at Mad Mike's Warehouse at the Hampton Downs Racetrack. Mike's got some very special vehicles in his shop today and we're gonna walk around and take a look at some of the cars he's got here, including this 767B from Japan, as well as a lot of little trinkets and items that Mike has around the shop. Now, Mike and I are very similar in that we like our, our little trinkets and he has a lot of very cool stories that go with a lot of those trinkets. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out. What's up, brother? Okay. Hey, man, the shop looks mean. Yeah. So Mike just had to run off and take a phone call. He just had a massive event this weekend called Mad Mike Summer Bash, and that's why I'm here in town. Actually, the poster's right behind me here. It was a massive event here in New Zealand. Uh, TJ, Calvin, and Jared DeAnda all joined me on this trip. They've since gone back to the States. I've decided to stay a couple days because how often do I get to get to New Zealand? So I'm hanging out with Mike today. I'm gonna help him around the shop. One of the things you guys might not know is that I actually worked for Mike. Uh, we met probably a decade ago now. In 2010, Mike came to the US and ran in Formula Drift. And he actually um, took a few years off after that to sort of gather his program and, and make, it, um, make it what he felt it needed to be in order to be successful in Formula D. He came back to the series in 2015 and 16 with his new Rad Bull, which is now on its, I think, fourth generation or third generation look, uh, which got debuted here this weekend at Summer Bash, which is super sick. And I'll show you guys that car in a little bit. They're all here under this roof, which is cool. This is his main headquarters for all of his race programs. So at any rate, um, I spent two years traveling the US with Mike and his team and uh, learned a lot about rotaries and about the love for rotaries that the, the Kiwis and New Zealanders have. You could say that Mike actually spawned my interest in rotary engines. Anyway, fast forward, it's 2018. Uh, TJ and I came out here in March to pick up his engine from PPRE. Uh, if you go back and watch that video on TJ's channel, you'll see that we were discussing actually coming to this event at that point in time. We did it, we came, and it was amazing. The event was awesome. If you guys haven't seen the content from the event, please go over to TJ's channel and uh, take a look because the, the, the event was amazing. And uh, I mean, the the crew, the cruise as it's called, allows anybody that paid for a ticket or an entry to get in with a vehicle, uh, to take their vehicle on the Hampton Downs race circuit, which is right behind me here. TJ and I actually had the opportunity to take out Mike's RX-7 Mad Bull, which is his uh, probably most prized possession. It's the car that's been in his fleet the longest and in my opinion is the most iconic of his builds which is pretty dope um, to get to drive that car and to have the trust of mike to jump behind the wheel of that car was pretty awesome and actually meant a lot to me um, i'm super thankful that i had that opportunity um, anyway what i want to do is take you guys around the shop uh, today i'm going to do it pretty loose holy cow i don't know if you guys can hear that but that is a I'm gonna go ahead and guess that's the 13B turbo from Rumble, his off-road truck, which is pretty sick. Yep, and there it goes out the door. Hey. Mike has a lot of loud machines in this building, so throughout the day, I'm basically spending the whole day here. I don't leave back to the States till tomorrow. So what I wanna do is actually show you guys around the complex here, show you all the knickknacks that I introed earlier that he has, <clears throat> because when I say he has a lot, it's an understatement. Okay, so, throughout the day, I'm gonna go through all these things and kind of show you around. This should be a fun video. So that little whip right there is actually a project that Mike did for Tony in conjunction with Mazda and Rocket Bunny. So that is basically a MX-5 Miata with the Rocket Bunny wide body, some rotiform wheels, lowered on KW suspension with their hydraulic lift. So this is Rumble. Uh, all of Mike's cars are themed off of the Red Bull name and all the cars have a B-U-L, Bull, at the end of them. So this is Rumble because it's an off-road truck. This truck was purchased in Temecula, California, uh, I think about two years ago now. Uh, it is a retired stadium truck that had a Renesis RX-8 engine in the back of it, which was the spec engine, if I'm not mistaken. Some of you guys might know better about that than me. I'm not a big off-road truck guy. 
But at any rate, I actually got a ride in this truck at Goodwood Festival Speed Through the Woods. Holy cow, does it rip. And to make things, to make matters even crazier, Mike has actually pulled the Renesis engine out of this thing and actually tossed in a 13B uh, peripheral port motor. And it is pretty mental. All of this has been built by the boys over at PPRE. Um, I, I should say the engine itself and uh, the drivetrain has been uh, gone through and rebuilt by PPRE in, in Wanganui, New Zealand. Uh, but look at the travel on this suspension. It's insane. And I don't know if you can tell how big that is, but it's pretty much over half the height of the truck. So basically you can just huck this thing off of jumps and it doesn't bottom out or anything. It just rack, 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 rack. It's pretty badass. It's got a hydraulic handbrake in here. Um, that's not something that would have been on the stadium truck itself. Mike has added that just for a little bit of more fun in the truck. He can kick it, uh, kick it sideways when he wants with the handbrake or control the car in turns with that. It's also added a, a Haltech uh, heads up display instead of the analog gauges that the car or the truck had uh, when he bought it from the previous owner that raced it in stadium trucks. This is Mike's RX2, which he, yeah. So Mike, the story on this car, Mike actually picked this car up in the States. I think it was in Florida. Um, it's actually in really good condition. And the story on this one is Mike had a repo. This is, the grandfather. This is granddad. <laughs> So Mike has dubbed the RX2 the granddad because it's the oldest car in the fleet. What's the story on this one? This, this actually was a repo and then it like transformed into an RX2 somehow. Somehow, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> somehow what happened was uh, 2015 when yep. we were forming a drift, yep. um, Orlando um, had a fan come up and was asked if I could sign the dash of his RX2. And so we caught up with him later in the day. This was his RX2 which he had in the car park. It was like, the holy grail of RX2 is to be Series yeah. 2, which has the half moon tail lights, the colorway is silver with black interior, but inside is like brand new. Still got like all the little paper tags and stuff, and how to operate the choke and that sort of stuff. Um, but we went yeah, back, well, that, then that year we, we built the Pitbull, which was the REPU. Yeah. Um, and then the following year we went back to Orlando, met the same guy, and then was saying how sick the REPU was, Pitbull. And I asked if he still had the RX2. And he said yes. <laughs> and so we ended up swapping. So That's an awesome story. I lost my repo, but we had just signed a deal with Hot Wheels, which was really epic for Chris, because then I didn't actually tell him, but six months down the track, we sent him a, a Hot Wheels, the actual official one, which was a global release of Pitbull. Which is awesome to have a Hot Wheels car made of your actual vehicle. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> rad. And then for this to come back to New Zealand, we got to comply. There's a few things, obviously, like that's. So this is a war on fitness. So this is like what we have in New Zealand. It's just really a safety check every six months. Yeah. How hard is it to get a car that's this old and sort of not been from this country? How hard is it to get a war on fitness on this or get it registered? I guess is the best. Um, yeah, to get it registered, it's not too bad. You get a um, you get like a cert tag, so I can show you the what that looks like. So that's hidden in there, but that, that literally says everything, like it says like all the modifications yep. to a car. Yep. Like, oh, um, so a little 13B in here. Yeah, a little 13B stage, and then it's got IDA on it, and then stainless exhaust, so as much as it's a sleeper, it still goes pretty good, but yeah. we kept it like era correct, so it's still just carbureted um, that's... Without, without injection or anything too crazy, because they actually go really, <laughs> really good. That's a pretty cool setup, powered by Red Bull. Powered by Red Bull. <laughs> Everything's powered by Red Bull. Right <laughs> Red Bull and two-stroke. Yeah. It's a key recipe. Uh, With the half moon tail lights. Super desirable. Well. And then Thirsty is obviously slang for Thirsty. In New Zealand, we only have six characters to our license plates. Also, hence why all my bulls only have one L. Yeah, people wonder why I explained that. <laughs> we only have like Mad Bull as one L, Bad Bull, Rat, blah blah blah. 
I explained that. Only, yeah, I what? explained that all the cars are bull, but I, and with one L, and I didn't know that it was only because you had six. Yeah, so I like. This. Yeah, so you got to be quite, quite creative. But in California, we have seven, so you would be able to pull it off in California. Yeah, you could buy me. You could get pretty creative <laughs> with it. And this is sort of the elephant in the room. Um, it's not every day Mike gets to walk into his shop and see a seven six seven B just chilling right inside the door. <laughs> Like this is the inspiration. So inspiration and the inspired. The mantle is inspired totally from. What is? They're both powered by the same engine. That yeah. Spread a four and a peripheral port. The sound when I first heard one of these things on YouTube was like, man, I oh. gotta build one of these things one day. So, so we built a four rider in 2009. We took it to Long Beach for the Red Bull World Drift Champs. We got top eight, and then um, since then we've been developing like. The NA4, but this the NA4 are actually in Madville that you guys drove over the weekend. Yep, that motor has been together for six years. Six, so for the six years, guys, yeah, the, the motor has been you. running hard for six years. I've seen this man One drive this car, owner. yeah, he does, he doesn't take it easy on the car. <laughs> so, this has been your inspiration, Mike, the 767 or 787. Yep. A lot of people don't know this, but my inspiration for building my rotary car was actually seeing Mike drive. Mad Bull. Oh, really? It at World Red Drift Bull Champs. World Drift Champs in Long Beach, Sick. where it was actually a big fire. So I I barely knew Mike at that time. In fact, I think I may have met you at that event. So I had already been in the drift scene for many years and had known of Mike, but never really had a chance to really chat with him. But met him at that event, watched the car run for the first time on U.S. soil, and I absolutely fell in love with the noises that came out of this car. If you guys haven't seen or heard this car, go on YouTube and just. Check out Mad Bull, Mad Mike's Mad Bull. I think you'll be pretty impressed with the sounds. Yeah, so with the naturally aspirated four rotor, we run the EFI hardware, like 55s. We used to, well, I mean, we've experimented with a lot of different manifolds and injectors and. It's quite a long runner length. It is, but you can see these injectors, like that fuel doesn't even touch the manifold. That's just literally sprayed <laughs> straight into the motor. Holy cow. And that's why there's probably a lot of flame and fire and stuff that comes spitting out the back of the Yeah, thing. I'd say I didn't even realize that until you pointed it out. And then we've got the um, second row up the top here. Oh yeah, that's a lot of fuel injection. With these two, like when it comes to drifting, what I love about these two cars now with Rad Bull, with this, this whole throwback with the NA3 rotor, but it was a really hard car to drive, and so I put it out to the. <laughs> I fans. think that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, it's like put it out to the fans. Like, what do we what do we do next? And um, yeah, my fans voted to go back to my OG 20B setup. So it's natural aspirated three rotor. So it's actually lost 800 horsepower. <laughs> oh, I just down a wee 800 horsepower. But so we, I haven't shown I haven't shown them the engine yet, Mike. So they don't know what you're talking about, but. So I guess the best way to put it is this new engine set, they're still cutting their teeth with it. Um, NA3 rotor, which as he mentioned, was a fan vote on Instagram, which is very commendable for a guy like Mike who could pretty much put whatever rotor engine he wants in any of his cars. But take this car down from a four rotor twin turbo down to a peripheral ported NA3 rotor. Yeah. It's quite remarkable, down 800 horsepower. So you can imagine Mike was sort of driving this at you know, trying to drive it at 10 tenths, but very difficult with that kind of horsepower, short wheelbase. Now with, what, 300 and... Three knot, like no, oh, no more than 400. Just shy of 400 horsepower, he's driving this thing now at probably no 11 tenths. Yeah. <laughs> To get it to do what he needs it to do. But even the steering, we took out all our crazy steering geometry and we've just put in all the old school stuff so it's just cut knuckles. We're able to dial and grip in and out really easily with a KW suspension. Um, but other than that, we've just really tried to make this whole car back to grassroots. The fans wanted an NA3 rotor. Of course, losing 800 horsepower meant that we had to lose a lot of grip and change the setup a lot. So it's gone back to radial compound tires. We're running like stretch 255s on 12 inch rotor, uh, rotor form wheels. And dude, we still went out, we qualified first, we made it, we would by far keep it up with any of the cars on the track and managed to um, get it up on the podium, so. I got to judge the drift event, which I was very honored to do, um, with two other very qualified individuals and to see Mike actually wheel this thing against, I guess what are some of New Zealand's best drifters? There was, uh, we had New uh, Zealand's best, we had all the champions, previous champions. Yeah. And to see Mike wheel this against them and be able to actually put it right on their door time and time again is just testament that you don't have to have a thousand horsepower to be competitive in professional level drifting. Um, 
he was able to keep up. Uh, and this is a very grassroots setup, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Um, well, the, the fans wanting the, the throwback engine decided, like, let's do the throwback graphics. So back 10 years ago. So that right would be. we did the digi camo, matte black, gloss black, mad bull. And then the fan favorite livery was Humble, which was three years ago when we just had the silver. So this car has purely been built for the fans and it freaking rips. <laughs> what I'm saying about slammed footmen. I think there's a little bit of guard rub there. A little bit. <laughs> well, clear through. So that's sort of the background on on uh, Rad Bull. Uh, I have quite a history with this car. If you guys know my background, which I explained a little bit in the beginning of the video, is that I traveled with Mike throughout the States for two seasons of Formula Drift, uh, helping with this car. Uh, but mostly this was my obsession. Uh, Mike's obsession was this, my obsession was this, making sure that it was organized and well kept. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see that the old uh, pit box still lives on with its with its wide meats and uh, aggressive stance. Yep, <laughs> stance everything. <laughs> Even Mike's tool cart has aggressive stance, probably better than most of our cars. So, um, yeah, kudos to Snap-on for hooking him up with this dope box and him taking it even further than most people take it. Aside from your competition cars, you also have the Mad Cab, which I got a chance to ride in with TJ and Calvin this weekend at Summer Bash. And this is quite a unique vehicle in that Mike loves to give ride-alongs, so he said, the heck with it, I'm just gonna build a four-seater. So instead of taking one person for a ride at a time, he takes three. Yes, that's how I made the, like, actually, custom make the seats with like the oh, yeah. their own like the little piping and stuff to match with the Mad Cab logo to match all the interior. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that the piping matches the stock interior. And what, wait, what kind of car is this Mike? Because this is a 1987 Mazda Luce, or in Japan they call it Luce. Luce, yeah. yeah. So we never got these in the States, but you did buy this here in New Zealand. Yeah, I found yeah. it here, yeah. So obviously the body is quite different than what you would find in a normal Luce. Um, Mike, I'm gonna just toss in what I noticed is different, but I'm sure there's way more. So we've got a set of over fenders that have been added front and rear. Those have been chopped because it is a four door. Mike did modify the front grille and also add a rotary badge on the front, which is really cool. That's, that's because of course. <laughs> that's like a V6 transplant. <laughs> so, the, so this had a V6 from Mazda originally. Yeah, and now it runs 13 V turbo. Ooh, yeah. So it's a JC Cosmo 13B uh, Monster Bridge Sport. Runs Garrett GTX 40, which is the same same setup we ran on um, on uh, Rad Bull. Yep. Um, yeah, and then all the, all, of power. all the Turbo Smart goodies. Yeah, it's 500 horse at the wheels. Felt it's plenty runs a good. HGT um, sequential six speed. So it sounds when you're on board, it sounds like it's got about 800. It, it does. Flaps through all the gears, no worries. Um, and then Rotor Corner custom made these IDK wheels, which are a 15 by 10, which we run a 205. Again, radial tires keep it fun, so I don't have to swap tires every lap unless we hust like four laps, well, depending on the track, but you can hust for a good, <laughs> good length of time. Oh, we were out there for a few laps and no issues. Yeah, and then inside we've got like the old taxi meter trips and just bits and pieces I found over my travels whilst in Japan competing in Formula Drift. Um, just to add to that whole crazy um, taxi theme. Taxi the light box we made ourselves, so uh, the logo as well. Uh, Boso Kotsu, so that means crazy transportation service, pretty much. So you got <laughs> Mad Mike's crazy transportation service. This all lights up and we. You know. Does this come on with the headlights, or how does that? How nah, do you? It's it's on its own switch. switch. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was watching Mike build this from the States and putting up his social media posts and things, I always wondered if this was like a sign that existed from another transportation company that he just retrofitted his logo to fit. But of course, in Mad Mike fashion, this is completely custom made for this car. <laughs> and then the livery, I designed all the livery. Well, I designed the livery on all the cars, but it's, that's my trade actually from school was doing graphic design and vinyl wraps. And I still enjoy that to this day. And this is probably one of my favorite ones that we've just done on Mad Bull with the whole throwback theme. Um, well, Mad Bull was like the tribute to Mazda and all our partners on board. And we've used all, you can see like old Haltec logo and we've tried to really stylize that car around the 70s. You know, I didn't even pick up on that, that that's the old logo. Yeah, so all, all the, like even Yamaha, the Mazda, like all the logos that are on that car um, go back, even Rotiform, that was their first logo they used. So as far as 
any of our partners go back. The Hot Wheels is the older Hot Wheels logo. Yeah. So every time I'm here at Mad Mike's headquarters, I'm always flabbergasted by the parts that are in this little row. 